Revenue Management in the Cruise Industry by Batul, Shauna, Allison, and Carrie. The cruise industry has been making waves in the world of hospitality. Cruise Market Watch states that the worldwide cruise industry is worth an estimated $39.6 billion, which experienced a 6.9% increase from 2014 to 2015. It also carried over 22.2 million passengers, which is a 3.2% increase over 2014. Currently, there are three large parent companies that dominate the industry. Carnival Cruise Lines, shown in red in this chart, is currently the industry leader, followed by Royal Caribbean International in dark blue and Norwegian Cruise Lines in green. Carnival Cruise Lines is currently responsible for 48.1% of all cruising passengers and generating 42.2% of all industry revenue. Their largest and most popular brand is Carnival. Royal Caribbean International is the second industry leader, catering to 23.1% of all passengers and holding 22.1% of total industry revenue. So what does cruising entail? In fact, due to its similar offerings, cruises have often been referred to as a floating hotel. Today, typical cruise ships offer accommodations, various dining options, entertainment, activities including casino and spas, and much, much more. This diagram outlines the business model for cruises. As you can see, there are many different avenues in which a cruise line can generate revenue, including ticket sales, shore excursions, and retail shops. Cruise ships have come a long way over the years. Take the Titanic and the world's second largest ship today, Oasis of the Seas, as an example. In 1912, the Titanic was the largest ship in the world, accommodating over 3,500 people over 9 decks. Today, the Oasis of the Seas can accommodate over 8,000 people over 16 decks and is approximately 5 times larger in size. With the extreme advances in technology we've experienced since 1912, cruise ships can now fulfill their guests' every want and need. A few examples of onboard offerings now include bumper cars, shopping malls, lavish two-story staterooms, and countless forms of entertainment. Cruise line competition isn't just fueled by what amenities are offered, but also by the size, length, and speed of the ships, as well as destinations offered. Due to the large scope of this industry, there are many different markets that it tries to cater to. The broadest markets include families, couples, and singles. These markets can then be broken down into different geographic, demographic, and psychographic segments. Some cruise specific submarkets that have been identified by analyzing specific types of travelers include explorers, admirals, marines, little mermaids, escapers, souvenirs, and adrift. Each of these submarkets has a specific story. For example, Little Mermaids can be described as a segment made up of upper middle class families who experience a fast paced lifestyle. When they're not working, their lives consist of maintaining the home and family. Their main travel goal is to maximize leisure activity as a family experience, and it sees opportunities for real quality bonding. In the hospitality industry, inventory management is very important. It allows for managers to systemize the process of tracking the consumption and use of goods and services. The primary inventory that cruise ships have to monitor is passenger inventory. Unlike hotels, maximum capacity of a cruise ship is not based on the number of rooms, but instead is based on the number of lifeboat seats available. Cruise ships use a property management software to keep track of the number of passengers booked to sail. But the question is, how does a cruise ship ensure that they have all the food and drinks needed to satisfy every guest before setting sail into the middle of the ocean? Cruise lines generally establish contracts with vendors in the designated home port. They look to sign contracts in order to protect themselves against stockouts, fluctuations in the market, and to receive price discounts. These contracts need to be signed in advance in order to receive timely delivery of the products at a lower cost. Because of this, the order is given before an accurate number of passengers on the cruise is known, and therefore, the order may not accurately reflect what will be needed. As the ship nears its departure date, number of passengers in demand becomes more accurate. If an increase in inventory is necessary, additional procurements can happen through local spot markets. Advanced supply contracting gives cruise operators a cost-efficient procurement strategy, but spot market purchases are crucial in avoiding stockouts and meeting day-to-day -day demand. Unlike hotels, cruise ships charge rates per person instead of per room. Guests are labeled as either double occupancy or additional guests. The charge for a stateroom starts at a double occupancy base rate and are then charged for each additional guest staying in the room. The base rate is dependent on what class of room you are choosing to stay in. For example, an inside room will be less expensive than an outside or balcony room.
If you are a passenger traveling on your own, you're labeled as a single cabin occupant. A cruise line will typically charge you the double occupancy rate with an additional surcharge as a penalty for not having at least two full paying customers in the room. Other pricing conventions that could have an influence on the base price of a cruise include trip extensions, airfare, and ground transportation. In order to create successful revenue management practices, cruise lines need to have a good understanding of market segmentation, price discrimination, useful marketing tactics, and yield management. As mentioned earlier in the presentation, there are many different markets and submarkets that the cruise industry tries to market to. Segmentation of these markets allows a cruise line to accurately reach a consumer with specific needs and wants. Now let's look at our Little Mermaid segment again for a moment. Remember that they're from an upper middle class family and want to break away from their busy life to have some quality family bonding time. Based off of what we know about this market segment, we can build a marketing strategy. A rough strategy could revolve around family activities to do on the ship and could be shown in the form of commercials during primetime TV and in advertisements in suburban areas. In order to catch their attention, create ads that are colorful and have exciting visuals. Carnival Cruises wanted to promote themselves as a unique brand and promoted their extensive variety of events including Mardi Gras, live music, discos, and casinos. This marketing strategy helped to attract their target market segment of young adults and children and was crucial to their success. Price discrimination is essential to the success of revenue management practices in the cruise industry. Price discrimination can be defined as the action of selling the same product at different prices to different buyers in order to maximize sales and profits. Cruise lines are interested in selling out as early as possible so they can be comfortable knowing that their inventory has been accounted for and they are not scrambling to fill empty cabins. This is done through offering incentives or discounts to people who decide to book their cruise early. With Seaborne Cruise Line, a regular suite at the double occupancy rate would normally cost $6,600 per guest. However, they do offer a discount for people who choose to book early and can receive as much as 50% off. This shows that individuals are being charged different prices for the same product, thus representing price discrimination. For the cruise industry, companies have typically seen a wave of bookings during the period between Christmas and early spring. Typically, this is when 30 to 40 percent of all bookings for the year will be made. However, according to John Lovell, the president and CEO of Vacation.com, the number one cruise industry trend in 2015 was that there is starting to be less of an emphasis on the traditional wave booking period. This is due to clients starting to understand that the further they book in advance, the better deal they can get. This principle of revenue management is similar to the hotel industry. It involves selling more space on the ship than is actually available in the inventory. Overbooking tries to ensure that every space on the ship is filled, even if there are any no-shows or last-minute cancellations. In 2004, Carnival Cruises was forced to bump hundreds of passengers from a ship set to sail out of Baltimore. This was due to a large group booking that caused the ship to become overbooked. When cancellations did not incur as anticipated, some passengers were bumped onto another ship with a different departure date. Although overbooking can cause an uproar of negative comments from passengers, it is a tried and true technique in ensuring that the ship is full when it departs, thus maximizing revenue. According to Rick Sasso, the president of MSC Cruises USA, one of the highest trends in buyer behavior is the seeking of added value. He states that yes, price is always a key factor, but guests want added value extras. These extras can include anything from drink packages to prepaid gratuities and onboard discounts. Focusing on this trend, cruise lines can capitalize on advertising these added value packages and attracting a wider range of guests. Promoting these bundled packages is essential to revenue management success since it gives the client a greater incentive to get on the ship and once they are on it, they will likely spend more on other ship amenities. As stated earlier, the maximum capacity on a cruise ship is not dictated by the number of rooms, but instead is controlled by the number of lifeboat seats. It plays a serious role in revenue management practices. There are two extremes when it comes to lifeboat seat capacity. First, you may have had a bunch of families book with three or more people in each cabin, which could cause a ship to run out of lifeboat seats before they run out of cabins. A revenue manager may decide to consider closing family promotions and increase the price of additional guests in order to try to fill more cabins. The second extreme is the opposite. A cruise ship could be seeing a large number of couples and singles booking. This may cause them to open up more family promotions and lower additional guest prices due to the abundance of lifeboat seats still available. Now, what is the cruise industry's biggest problem? According to the CEO of Carnival, Arnold Donald, 
The industry's biggest problem involves a harder core of people who have negative preconceived notions of what cruising is. They believe that the ships are too crowded, they don't want to eat at buffets, that the ships are floating cesspools and pollute the environment, and that they're only for old people and obnoxious teenagers. In order to change this, companies must first identify the psychographic, demographic, and geographic characteristics of the Virgin Cruiser market segment. Then they must build and implement a marketing strategy to promote the realities of cruising versus their preconceived notions. Finally, offer them an incentive of a first-time cruiser discount. Where can revenue management in the cruise industry go now? Water Studios, Royal Haskening, and Dutch Docklands have formed a group to create a floating cruise terminal built at sea. This terminal would mean that cruise companies would not need to pay to visit as many ports, and that the cruise ship would retain more of the guest spending since passengers would not be able to spend their money at ports. According to Tom Murphy, the CIO of Royal Caribbean Cruise Limited, there is an opportunity to do more for in-cruise revenue management. We can allow production of coupons, sweepstakes, and two-for-ones for passengers based on activity during the cruise rather than wait for the next cruise. Finally, Thomas Frey has some suggestions of additional amenities and services that could be added to cruise ships to help generate more revenue. Some suggestions include underwater viewing chambers, onboard observatories, electronic gaming tournament centers, pet spas, and cook-your-own-dinner dining rooms. It is clear that the cruise industry is booming and still has additional room for growth. With that growth and the advancements of technology, revenue management practices will continue to evolve in order to maximize revenues. Thank you for listening and have a great summer.